Hey everyone, welcome to the Light Movement Podcast. I am here today with Tanner Polsley, and we are gonna talk all about social media. You are gonna want to stick it out to the end because we're gonna talk about how to deal with haters today. So at the end, we are gonna talk about our three top criticisms that we get on social media and how do we deal with them. So I'm sitting here with Tanner Polsley. Well, I'm not Ellie's son. <laughs> Sorry with that. <laughs> I'm not related to the Milans at all. So I'm the social media manager for everything we do, pretty much. What job have you not had with us? You've worked. You know, in, you've worked I've, not officially, not like, <laughs> at, but you know, to help out. You've worked in the art store. Yeah, I've been the art done store. Everything in media, pretty much. You've done editing. You've have. done DP stuff. You've done just general camera stuff. You've done yeah live setups you've done Did a lot of media stuff a lot of media stuff. and a lot of random stuff too like i cut out every name badge from milan art experience by hand wow okay. i know by hand because yeah. we didn't print them in time <laughs> well i would say that you you are essential and well, you, you uh do a great job and right now you are very heavily in content creation, providing a lot of feedback, ideas. You're you're very involved in Outstanding Artist. Mm -hmm. You filmed uh, season two and three with others. But today we are going to talk about uh, social media for artists. What are some really uh, important things that artists should do mm -hmm. for social media and their accounts and how to really be authentic, I think is something yeah. good to cover. Yeah, authenticity is such a an interesting one because when you start posting on social media, I feel like that's one of the first things you get accused of as being inauthentic. Mm -hmm. Like everyone thinks, oh, another fake girl on Instagram. What you about know? fake boys? I mean, that happens too, but I've, I've seen it directed a lot more towards women, yeah. you know, yeah. which like not to get super feminist like five minutes in, but <laughs> I mean, it is noticeable. Women are always called inauthentic fake a lot more than men ever are. That's true. I give right? you that. How do you suggest um, artists uh, remain are authentically authentic? Because you can be fake authentic. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen that. So how would you say an artist can be authentically authentic? Do you think it's something that's from within or it's something you can consciously do? What do you think? It's something that, you know, being like, being on camera, being putting yourself out there is something that to be authentic with it. I feel like whenever you first start out, yeah, I'm sure you can relate to this. When you first start like recording yourself and stuff, it's going to feel so fake, uh, so fake, you know, like when you first filmed like the mastery program, how authentic did you feel standing in front of that camera teaching? Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of blowing your, your, uh, you know, point here, but oh I, I felt, I felt totally out of my league. I felt super, nervous, like I didn't know what I was doing, but I, I did feel authentic. But there are times where I haven't. You know, for me, it's when I'm like like in an ad or I don't know, it's like in, <laughs> yeah. in something where somebody else is giving me the directives on what I need to say mm -hmm. and kind of how I need to say it. And I have to find myself within those boundaries. That's when I have felt struggled with authenticity. Yeah. Because then it's like, you know, you approach social media with like, an ulterior motive in a way. Like you're trying yeah. to get people to like you, follow you, buy your art, engage with you. Sign up and, for a workshop. Yeah. Yeah. And like, that's not really what you do like in normal everyday life. Right. But I get what you're saying. If you feel sort of in, in, um, inexperienced and kind of like, you don't know what you're doing, maybe to overcompensate, uh, to seem yeah. confident, you're, you're going to come across. Yeah. You're going to like genuine try and like amp up certain things about you yeah you know, that's like yeah. i feel like every time someone like meets like a celebrity or something and you're talking about they were like they're they're always say like it's like a toned down version of their persona on screen i guess that's kind of the nature of social media at least as it is right now it is kind of fake mm -hmm. i guess no not fake i don't want to say that but it is a performance you know well I think it, it being authentic is a big part of the conversation. I mean, if you're as old as me and you've seen a lot of stuff, you know that that has not been a quality that's been talked about. 
Hmm. Being authentic and genuine is only a recent thing because of social media. Oh, I see what you're saying. It really wasn't, at least in my world, maybe I'm wrong and other people will have other experiences. But in my experience before social media, I think the last time I heard that was like in high school when people would be like, oh my gosh, she's like so fake, you know, like that. But it wasn't like um, something that you you talked about a lot, like being your true self, being authentic, being genuine. I think there's a real desire for that now because social media has kind of highlighted how Mm -hmm. unauthentic some people have felt like they need to be in order to sell or promote or put something out there. I feel like nowadays, like, you know, everyone's on camera, everyone's online. Whereas before, like before social media, I know, I'm not do, that old. So do you, it's, do you even remember before social media? I mean, okay. I'm, I'm 28. So when I was real young, you know, it's not like, I mean, that's before Facebook was invented and stuff. So okay. when I was a wee lad, there wasn't, it wasn't really social media. When you went but, to high school, was there social media? Oh, for sure. It is kind of weird. You went to high school before social oh, media. Oh, I know. Thank God. <laughs> thank God. I was a rebel in high school. I know you know that, but I was. I was Ooh, your MySpace account would have been amazing. No, it would have been. It would, it would have, been have been so good. It would have been so bad. It. Uh, okay, well here. I do, would have had to pay a fortune to get that scraped. <laughs> well, would your MySpace account be authentic to who you were? You know, I don't know. Honestly, I was pretty messed up in high school, so. Who knows what I would have done, Yeah, (laughs) but it could have been for my parents because my parents were like the Gestapo. I think I probably would have been, because I was pretty sneaky and savvy, I probably would have had a fake for my mom and I would have like made it all about studying or something. I don't know. Oh my gosh, yeah. (laughs) Who knows? Studying with my friends. Yeah, but then somebody (laughs) would have taken video of, you know, me at some party, put it on their account and yeah then yeah i would have been in trouble i probably would have been grounded half my life yeah you know that's such an interesting thing about social media is that you can be um unwillingly authentic to say because anyone can take a video of you at any point and post it online and you know that's like, right and yeah. you know there it is but yeah. in terms of like your self curated stuff you know you actually have control over that to me that's why integrity is so important yeah uh, because who you really are and who you are on the outside need to match up. So who you are to other yeah. people and who you genuinely are, if those are congruent, then you have integrity. That's really the basis, I think, of a social media is strive for integrity just in life and how you conduct yourself as an artist in business and online. Then then you never you don't have to have a good memory. You don't have to worry about things. It's really freeing. I think that's a good point. Okay, so Tanner, um, prior to this job, were you doing stories, talking on camera, like really out there, putting yourself out there, drawing publicly um, on social media? No, no art publicly on social media, really. I was very uh, reserved about that because it wasn't good. It wasn't good before I worked here. This You could actually learn how to draw from Milan art, I've learned. <laughs> but, you know, I've always dabbled with, like, be, trying to become, like, a, a figure, I guess, one way or another. Like, I tried starting a YouTube channel when I was in high school. Oh, I didn't know that. Is it still out there? I'm oh, look it yeah. Up. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh I'm, you got to send me the links. This will be... Ooh, it's so bad. Just from my observation, when you first started doing, like, stories or talking a little bit on camera... You definitely felt less, more camera shy than you are now. I'm definitely more camera confident now than, I feel like that's something that's always growing. You're always getting better. The more you do it, the better you get at it, yeah. you know? Do so, you have any specific tips though for artists to to get over camera shyness or like being able to talk? I could even learn from this because I noticed you talk by yourself into the camera because I see you up in Dimitra's studio making videos. Yeah. And I still really struggle with that. So what tips do you have for artists to be able to talk alone into the camera? You know, one thing, this is going to, you're going to hate this, but what really helped me get a lot better at it was watching myself, watching the recordings, studying it. I feel like people get weird about like, you know, seeing their own face, hearing their own voice. And when you're recording it, you know, you're thinking about 
this is my face, my voice. I'm getting all in my head about it. You just got to, you know, learn what you're working with. You got to actually know, like, this is what my face looks like. This is what my voice sounds like. This is what other people are perceiving me as. You just got to, like, watch back yourself recorded. You got to and study it. Like, actually, like, study it. Get to know it. Like, see what weird things you do with your eyes or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. Eventually, as I've done that, I've, like, I just... I got, I got used to myself, I guess, a way. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's where a lot of it stems from is... So did you make corrections in some of your mannerisms or things that you would do? Yeah. I used to be so, like, shifty-eyed when Ooh, I recorded. Oh, shifty-eyed. I know. I don't know why. I mean, I still... Now I'm, now I'm thinking about it. I'm just like, am I looking around too much? <laughs> <laughs> but I would always just, like, be looking around, like not just at the mm -hmm. camera, the constantly. Mm -hmm. I was like, what am I having a stroke? What is happening to me? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of it also stems from um, insecurities. Like I can't count how many people say like, I can't stand to hear my own voice or to see myself on camera. Mm -hmm. And if you're thinking like that, like how are you going to be on camera if you can't True. even yeah. stand and it, it yourself? Does, it does get better. But see, I, I, I've always had like these fears and not to say other people don't. I'm sure everybody has these fears to some degree. But I feared just even talking to other people, you know, yeah. like when I was a kid, super shy, teenager, very, very shy. And then as I grew and I became less shy, then it turned into like a fear of public speaking. Mm -hmm. Then I got over that and then it became a fear of being on camera. And then I, I got over that. And now I still have some insecurities about camera and... Now it's like talking alone to myself that's mm -hmm. hard. I, I, I don't want to just say like, just do it a lot. You no, know? but uh, it's true. It, it really does. It, it's true for everything. Whatever you're struggling with, just face it head on and do it. Unfortunately, it takes practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes from like, you know, like, what are you talking about? Because like, if you're really struggling with it, maybe you're not doing a topic you should be like talking about. Because like, if it's mm. not coming to you, it's just hard for me to be my animated self oh, when yeah. I when I don't have an energy to kind of pull off of. Mm -hmm. Like you and I are sitting here talking. So it's just easier to be yourself when there's other people in the room. But, you know, I think awareness is a big key because until recently, I was not even aware that I was afraid of that or like struggled with that. Since the vlog camera came out, I, I'm like, oh my God, I don't like to do this, you know? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so I'm just now aware of it. And once I'm aware of something, I'm like, all right, Ellie, you can do this. And I, I get a plan and I, 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 I deal with my fear. So I, I want you to answer this question. Do you think that artists need to be in these days, to be successful, mm -hmm. need to be on camera, talk, open their mouth, we hear their voice. Is that essential? If I say yes, there's going to be like so much like, actually, this artist has never shown their face and they're making millions. So there's always going to be some kind of exception out there. Yeah. But in general, like I, I feel like you're going to have a really hard time developing a, a You have to probably be, I think you have to be that much better at everything you do if you yeah. if you don't do that and likewise you can be less better you can be yeah exactly you can kind of get away with like so so paintings and if people like you and get to know you yeah and the only way they can do that is if you know they see you i'd say if you're starting out as an artist and you know you're just building your social media presence you got to show your face in some way like mm -hmm. i've found even on like my own personal account that i post Anytime I post a reel that like has my face in it, it almost always does better than the reels that are like of just what I'm drawing or painting. I'd like to think it's because I'm just that beautiful, but I don't think that's why. I think it's... It's connection. People yeah. want to connect with other people. And that's why authenticity is so important. Media director behind the scenes asked the question, which I think is kind of deep. Is there a difference between on-camera persona? Is that unauthentic? If you sort of create this on-camera persona, Mm -hmm. persona and it's who you are on camera yeah is that necessarily you know unauthentic i think that's a very interesting question with a lot of gray area you know i think about like like paris hilton she has a very well-known persona that people think about her but if you actually like you know watch her in like a serious interview or whatever you know that's not she's not actually like dumb bimbo blonde like 
she portrayed for however many years, you know? In that regard, like, is there aspects of that persona she portrayed that's true to herself? I'm sure. But that's not her. So mm -hmm. that's something I would consider, you know, I, I'd consider that very inauthentic, like, you know? Right. Well, I think, like, in terms of Paris Hilton, Kardashians, etc., nobody's like, oh, those girls are so authentic. I'm just, I know them, right? right? Yeah. Even though they have a reality show. So I guess what you're saying is, it could be authentic or it couldn't be authentic. It just depends if you're amplifying something that's already a part of your personality. I feel like they are. Like, I feel like Kim Kardashian, what we see on Keeping Up With The Kardashians is like... You know, I really shouldn't offer any opinions about this because I've never seen any I'm of I'm about it. to say, I was like, I don't... <laughs> she Ellie doesn't own a TV. I so. was very <laughs> assumptive. I literally assumed that she was fake and not herself. But I honestly don't know. So I, I take you it You know, back. Kim's an interesting case. You know what? This is not going to turn into a gossip show. <laughs> 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 okay, we won't talk but, about Kim. But but in terms of the persona and whatnot, like I do feel like they they put there's true aspects. It's amplifying. So they either they tricked you and you got sucked in and you right, believe yeah. they're authentic, or they really are. Yeah. Okay. So this is so interesting because when you when you put yourself on camera, I feel like you kind of naturally will put on a character. It kind of at least a little bit, a little bit. Cause well, what we, what we teach, as you know, in the mastery program is that like you, you want to know your true voice. You want to know what causes you get behind, what, what really makes you tick, what you're passionate about, yeah. what it is you really want to say, what you care deeply about, yeah. um, even dealing with your own personal pain and overcoming. And so, you know, your why, right. And once yeah. you know your why, then, then you begin to have a framework of things that you want to talk about and yeah and, and i feel i think that's that's a a core of you know authenticity. inauthenticity and inauthentic authenticity and inauthenticity gosh is the the core message that you're delivering because i feel like if the core message you're delivering is your true authentic yeah. like what you want to give to the world you're gonna naturally be more authentic mm -hmm. Whereas like, you know, like reality stars and whatnot, their core message that they're giving out to the world is probably not really in line with like what they actually are and want to be, you know? Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I and mean, it depends on the person. It depends on the person too. But um, yeah. And like the archetypes, you know, we talk about archetypes. I mean, all an archetype is, is a pattern of behavior. So if you can kind of zero in on what your patterns of behavior are and then a real key to gaining followers and is to sort of isolate one facet of your pattern of behaviors and amplify it. And I think that's where the online persona comes into play. It's totally authentic. Yeah. You're just sort of editing out the other parts of you. Like people don't know this, but I joke all the time. Don't you think? Yeah. No. Okay. Ellie's a big oh, jokester. You, were, you, you, I know. <laughs> you paused. I was like, maybe I don't know myself. I don't know. But yeah, like I joke all the time and like I'll, I'll, I play tricks and I, I say things that never happened to, you know, get a laugh or. Yeah. yeah. Ellie's a trickster. Yeah. So. We're but, exposing her right here. <laughs> but I'm not the jester on my persona or who I am, you know, to yeah. everybody else because of my messaging and my why I choose to focus more on the, the magician uh, pattern of behavior with me or the hero pattern of behavior with me. Yeah, so, exactly. And yeah. all those things, like everything you post on social media, at least as far as I've seen, is authentic to you. Yeah. Like nothing you've ever posted is fake. You right. pretend to be something you're not. But also it's not, as you just said, it's not all of you. It's not the full picture. That's how to do a persona correctly without, you know, going full inauthentic. Yeah. And being somebody you're not or. Yeah. It's like, it's just focusing on, you know, one aspect that that will best, you know, deliver your message, you know. But sadly and conversely, um, it is true that if I were every um, facet of who I am, you know, like who you see, let's say, but, you know, like one day I'm jokey and then the next day I'm, you know, super serious and intense. And then the next day I'm like an outlaw and I'm like raging 
about yeah. something that I'm irate about, which you see me do too, then you're, you're like, man, I don't, because you don't see the whole person. Y you only see these slices of who the people are. So it yeah. can become very confusing, like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. And it's like, I don't know what I'm getting today. Is it Ellie the funny girl or Ellie the rager? Like, who is yeah. this person? <laughs> so that's why um, we teach for artists to really like know their why, zero in on their message and, you know, kind of stay uh, true to a, a pattern of behavior that's predictable. And that's what will get you more followers and get your message out that you want to get out because you, it's not convoluted by other messaging that's really irrelevant to your singular or central message. I feel like it's kind of healthy to not, you know, show be, everything. Yeah. Be, you know, you're a hundred percent. This is everything. about. Yeah. Me. That's like, the other thing. Like we, I'm sure you've seen on Facebook, the the middle-aged woman that shares every little thing that happens in her life. And it's like, Deborah, we don't need to see that your toenails infected. Like, that's a real example, by the way. Not actually Deborah. That's a fake name. But, you know, you can curate your... Authenticity. Authenticity a little bit. Right. It's and like, true. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't consider that being inauthentic. No. It's, be, it's, it's, it's setting a boundary. Yeah. Curating... Curating is one thing. Being mm -hmm. something you totally aren't is another. Do you think that people are afraid of being authentic because they're afraid of the repercussions of that, the judgment? It's like if I pretend to be somebody else and you judge me, it's not really me. Yeah. I, I see what you're saying, like grifters and whatnot trying to just, yeah. And I mean, I, I mean, there is definitely people that are afraid of being judged for their authentic selves and trying to hide behind a mask and whatnot. And the beast of social media is that there's always going to be, you know, haters. I mean, it kind of comes with it. Yeah. I mean, it's an unfortunate part of it. I mean, we, we, we got haters all the time. Many, many people will not like what we're doing. Just read the comments underneath this video. You will you will find them. Yeah, there are at least a few, I'm sure. Now we just fueled their fire and I they're know. typing away. <laughs> oh. I feel like if you ever deal with like a a negative comment like on the internet, I feel like that just reflects so much more negatively on the person that took time out of their day to post that. Yeah. Than it does on you. Because oh, really? you only exist on social media in small little snippets. So if someone says something negative about one little snippet they're seeing, like it's just a little snippet. They don't have the whole picture. They don't know you at all. Like mm. they don't know. They probably haven't even looked at any of your other posts or anything. Right. So. Yeah. So that is the thing is like um, when people make negative comments that can oftentimes, you know, really be hurtful is so out of context. They take just this little slice of what they've seen, pull it completely out of context. They don't know anything else and make some wide sweeping, you know, yeah, assumption. They, it's, it's them projecting, projecting something that's in true. themselves onto you. Like, Yeah, that's true. How do you think artists should handle any kind of negative, you know, feedback or public ridicule or haters or what? what's the best way to handle it? Okay, it's going to depend a little bit on what they're Because a portion saying. of your job is hater management. So. I know, right? <laughs> well, first, read what they said. You know, maybe it's see if there is actually anything like valuable, valuable to, it, yeah. to learn in it. Because, you know, I mean, we've gotten very hateful comments, but there's still sometimes something useful in them. Like, yeah. okay, maybe we should have worded our messaging here a little differently or, you know, whatever. Right. So see if there's anything of value to be gained. You just have to remember, like I said earlier, like this, it's do not take it personally. I know that's, that's like such the stereotypical, like it doesn't even almost sound helpful, but it, it is true. Like you're not a bunch of zeros and ones in a computer. You're yeah. a human being outside of that. Like your online persona is just a persona. And I mean, uh, Authentic, sure, but not you. When should they address or ignore? Like where, a, where's, where do you draw the line on that? Or where do you, or delete a comment? That's such a a balancing game that like, I don't know if there is like a, a formula. A, yeah, yeah, a formula for it. But sometimes, I guess it's good to know that sometimes you ignore, sometimes you ignore yeah. and delete. Sometimes yeah, you... it's like it's. I'd say it kind of depends on like how much 
effort you're actually willing to put into this. Because, like, if someone says, like, your face is ugly, like, okay, like, yeah. what, are you, what are you gonna say back? To I would that? leave that one so they look bad, but yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think when a comment like goes up, like, say your face is ugly, and then there's like 30 responses to like shred that person that said that and it just like it has nothing to do with the content yeah that you put here's the thing your social media is y- y- your platform you own the platform so if you make a post anything following that is you have ownership over you don't owe anybody the right to say anything they want under your post you are benefiting them you are allowing them to contribute if you want to if they want to say things and be heard, they should post about it on their own social media that they own, right? They don't own your social media. So I feel like when it benefits you and your why and what your cause and what you're going for and adds to the conversation, even if it's negative, because it's presenting a different way to look at something or it's giving you an opportunity to further your cause by challenging it, yeah, then it's then it's good to keep it. But if it takes everything off track into some other, you know. Yeah, like if it's not relevant, then if you post like you talking about something and someone says your face is ugly, like if you just delete, just delete it. It's just yeah. taking up space. It's taking up space. That's yeah. right. But if you like, if you voice an opinion and someone says something negative against it, that could, it could, like you just said, an opportunity to like explain yourself. Like yeah. I think it's okay to kind of defend yourself. Like that that doesn't mean you're being like defensive. Defensive. Yeah. You can take, hold your ground and yeah. Yeah. You know, clarify some things. I think that's good. I mean, they might respond still in bad faith or whatever. And at that point it's like, okay, well you made you, as long you made your points and your stick to your principles, what you stand for, then like nothing can get you down, baby. Okay. So Tanner, what are your top three I don't know, pretty consistent uh, negative feedback or constructive criticism that you you hear about um, about us here. What I see fairly often would be that, you know, we're, we're an echo chamber, I'd say. Like, you know, we're very uh, our way or the highway kind of thinking, which, I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can see that a little bit in that, like, a lot of us here have very strong opinions, yeah. but you and I definitely don't agree on a lot yeah, of things. Yeah, we differ on we differ on a lot of a different lot of things. things. Yeah, and so and I enjoy your other point of views and hearing it. Yeah, and I feel I like your I feel like views. it keeps me on track a little bit. So yeah, and vice versa, same. Like, yeah, I mean, one of the reasons we really value you is we're like, oh, let's run this by Tanner because like <laughs> we know it's going to be a challenging viewpoint. Not always, but a lot yeah, of times, but yeah. a lot of times. And, and it gets, it gives us like more perspective, but I do think that we have very, like, when we say things, we say it very opinionatedly yeah. with like authority so that, and then people who that resonates with are like, yeah, because they mm-hmm. haven't heard it. And if, and we, we feel like, I don't know, it seems like we're bucking the system a little bit yeah. when it comes to traditional art school, when it comes to you know, what should fly in art and what, you know, we, we talk about, you know, dark art or we talk about, like, there's a yeah. lot of things that are very opinionated that we talk about and there are things that are sort of unpopular. Mm-hmm. And so the people, I think it resonates with pipe up and go, yeah, finally there's, there's somebody saying it. And, yeah. and so then they, they, um, they, they comment and then that makes it feel like an echo chamber. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think that is I think you hit the nail on the head. It's just, you know, we have our beliefs, you know. The company has what it stands for, what it strives for. And I mean, we share that loud and proud. And I mean, honestly, that's kind of rare nowadays. That kind that level of authenticity, especially from brands, you know, being willing to like take a stand on st- state opinions and whatnot. And I feel like people just automatically assume that means, you know, we know better than you. But it's just what we believe. I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah. What, I don't think we'd ever like <laughs> turn someone away or. No, be, no, like, no. Yeah. So. Okay. What's another one? I see a lot of people say that we kind of like cheapen art mm. and we make it like, you know, like a lot of people say like they're just focused on making money, you know? Ah, uh, yeah. Capitalist sellouts, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, 
if you sell a piece of work. Oh, this one's riling me up too. I know, I know. I'm a, I'm a, I'm <laughs> I know. A... Basically, you know, we, we strip all meaning from art because we want artists <laughs> to make money. <laughs> yeah. Heaven forbid an artist makes a living. There's a lot of thought out there about money. Yeah. And it's like this and this, like there, there's a diversity of thought about money. And I'm not sure why, but within the artist community, there's a lot of consensus that would be sort of anti-money. You know, there's, there's kind of an anti-money, almost like a resentment towards anybody who wants money or focuses on money or sees yeah. money as, as a level of achievement. But in the business world and the entrepreneurial world, that is the measurement of success. They're incongruent. And I think that artists, uh, some artists, that consensus that I'm talking about, don't see art as a business. And that's okay. You know, yeah, you don't have to make art a business. Exactly. It's just, it's just not what we're focused on. What we're focused on is helping artists be able to do what they love most in life and have it as a business. And when yeah. you do have it as a business, whatever it is you have to say will be heard. Your cause will go further. You'll actually make an impact on this world. If you never sell your art, you're not going to you're not going to make a huge impact. That's proven over history. And like Van Gogh in his lifetime, he was a pauper and made zero impact. And it wasn't only until after his death. And everybody thinks his brother made him. It wasn't the brother. The brother got the ball rolling, but it's the generations that picked it up after. So nobody would know who Van Gogh was today if if his legacy didn't sell like crazy. And ironically, the guy who pretty much, I told you I'd go on a rant, but the guy <laughs> that um, you know pretty much started the glamour and the romance of starving artist Van Gogh his painting, the sunflower painting, has sold for the most money in history. I think it was like nine billion or something like that. You know, some people are kind of your tribe or your your peeps, and some people just aren't. And it's okay. We don't yeah. we don't need to, you know, our message isn't gonna be for everyone. I really think there's something powerful and beyond money and buying things and and status or anything. It's so far beyond that. There's something about having a viable a successful art business that is so deeply correlated to your message and your purpose as an artist, and they're not separate. And that's something that's been going on for so long, mm -hmm. you know. And another thing I just saw in some comments today, the art's all corrupt. It's all corrupt. And, you know, it's money laundering and it's, you know, whatever. That is exactly what we're fighting against because the yeah. elitist system that sells art, sells a Van Gogh at Sotheby's for $9 billion yeah. is that corrupt system. Yeah. And it's like, I, I feel like it's like we could be used, like money could be used so much better. Yeah. Like imagine instead of buying a $9 billion <laughs> painting, I don't think a painting could actually be worth that much. I mean, I don't know. That's a different topic. I don't topic, know. But... I don't know. But but there is this sort of elitist system that that like inflates things and blue chip, all that. But an artist growing their business through authentic social media, yeah. building their business. Through and, authentic means, selling their art. And selling their art to a, to a collector who loves it. Yeah. There's nothing cleaner and more beautiful than that. I feel like the people that r take issue with making money with art never think about the collector side of it. Yeah. Because like someone is buying this art to have, yeah. you know, like. They connect with it. They want to own it. They want to put it on their walls or, you know, wherever. And the money is the exchange for that because, you know, the collector couldn't paint it themselves. That's why they pay the artist who painted it. Yeah. It's a it's a beautiful exchange. I That's think. right. What do you think is the most common, you hear it just all the time, negative feedback mm. or constructive feedback? This one is very, I don't know. I find this so interesting because I just, I don't know. I, I don't see it. But... A lot of people will say that we just teach people to paint just like Demetra. And all our students are just little Demetra clones running around making women with animals. And <laughs> yeah, so what's what's your take on that? Why? What, where do you think that comes from even? Okay, here's the thing. is There's a couple things going on here. One of the things that we do teach in the mastery program is how to create abstract realism. And that appeals to a lot of people as a style because you get the best of both worlds. 
you you can show off or or express yourself and with all your skill that you possess in realism but you can also cut loose and be wild have brush strokes and let it fade out into abstraction and so it's very appealing to a lot of people and it's not Dimitra's style. She didn't. She yeah, did, she doesn't not. own that. There's people who paint in that style that have nothing to do with our school. Yeah, it's a style. So it's like taking every impressionist painter, the California impressionists. Yeah, um, people today who paint in impressionism and saying, "You all are just walking, you know, little clones of Monet." It's not. It's a, it's a style that that people choose because it feels good to them and it resonates with with their voice. Yeah. And, and that's how art history has always kind of been. Like right. there's periods of popular styles. I, I think right now, like you said, we're living in an abstract realism style. Like I'm sure 200 years from now, there's going to be a little section in art history book that says this was the abstract realism period. It could be. You never know. Yeah. So there's that. And it's it's recognizable. And yeah. I think it's flattering and honoring. I would, if I was Dimitri, I'd be really flattered. Um, <laughs> if I was, con if I was attributed to that, be like being the queen of that style, and everybody's copying me. I yeah, mean, <laughs> that would be that would be. I don't know. That's quite an honor. I don't think it's true, but it's it is an honor. And then I think another thing that kind of is interesting is people don't realize that whenever you see somebody that paints in abstract realism and they go to have gone to our school, they think that's all there is. Mm -hmm. And they don't recognize or know, because you'll see this other art, and I'll, I hear all the time, like, I go, oh, yeah, that's one of our graduates. And they're like, oh, it is <laughs> a graduate? Like, but they don't paint like Dimitra. Yeah, I know, along with thousands of other people that yeah. don't paint like Dimitra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, because you know, we have people that paint in, you know, pure non-objective abstract. We have people that paint impressionistically and, yeah. and a little more traditional. We have people that paint in, you know, straight up realism. We have people that paint very w whimsical and, and almost, you know, cartoony outlined kind of, kind yeah. of whimsical style. And Some people just between. draw. <laughs> Yeah, some people just draw. I mean, you name the style, people do it. But they, they, when they see it, they don't realize that they went to our school because it's not abstract realism. Mm -hmm. They only recognize the abstract realism and think that they are our only, our only students. Yeah. So I think that's why people um, maybe say that, and they don't. They just, they just don't know. They just don't know any better. Like I see this comment especially a lot in the outstanding artists. So many people will say that you know all the contestants. Looks like this was all painted by the same person. I've, yeah, that's weird. I don't right? get that. I, I feel like I'm being gaslit. I'm just like, I'm like looking at all these, I don't know. They look pretty different yeah, to me. Yeah, if you look at like Jessie Dahlquist and you compare her style to Katrina. Yeah. I mean, it was like night and day difference. Yeah. That is like completely different. It could be too though that people like look at art through like three prisms. Like there's abstract, abstract weird. So that's like Picasso, Kandinsky, et cetera. And then there's realism. And then there's um, like everything else. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The everything else is all the same or something. I don't know. It's like they, they, they don't understand the nuances to styles or something because maybe they haven't looked at enough art. I don't know. Right. That's I know. That's what I'm thinking. Of. I'm I like, I'm trying, like, like I don't want to. Tanya wanna... Johnston has such a distinct style that's right. so different than anything else I've ever seen. Yeah. Very different. And that's why like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to feel like I'm just like, oof, I know art. They're clearly different. Yeah. But yeah. like, they are. I don't know. I just... <laughs> yeah. Like I said, it feels like gaslighting. I don't know. These look so different to me. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. But And also in the show, they're not seeing like their full portfolio. They just see them paint a painting in most of the time, three hours, four hours, five hours at the most. And they're not seeing it like luxuriously, like yeah. long, long clips that just like are only the art and then and then succinctly go to another piece so you can compare yeah. them like i guess You're if you of, flash it all it's next all to each sort other. of probably blending together because there's just flashes of it yeah and that could contribute to the thought that like it's yeah. all the same that's maybe. why like like it's a it's a few comments so that's why like i don't want to just brush it off like ugh, they don't know what they're looking at you know yeah like i i want to address the yeah they because do. i do think like next time around it would be good to somehow, even if it's just stills that are like over, 
Mm -hmm. don't know how to do it, but like spend more time showing the artwork. Yeah, I think that would help too. And I I will say a a fair criticism to the contestants is that, I mean, it is mostly just portraits of women. (laughs) Right. Like, so that's like, that is fair. But that's really the only similarity, that and abstract realism. Other than that, I Mm -hmm. really do feel like they all have very distinct, unique styles. So, But a lot of the challenges were like, okay, they had to do an abstract. There was no women there. They had to do, mm-hmm. um, there were some challenges where they didn't have to do, or we we explicitly told them they couldn't do a portrait. Yeah. But yeah, it just so happened that the people that were chosen, a lot of them do like to do figurative work. So. Yeah. And I mean, there's nothing like, that's just their voice. That's what they're drawn to. So, yeah. you know. This was interesting take on, you know, discussion about social media artists, what that means today. Yeah. And I just want to encourage you guys, uh, if you are feeling a little camera shy or you don't know, you don't know who to be or what to be in front of the camera, the best thing is to just be yourself. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to not always look, you know, smart or beautiful or perfect because it's our flaws and our, our true authentic self that I think is so relatable and what people connect to. You don't have to have makeup on. You don't have to, you know, be uh, airbrushed and yeah, whatever. Just be, like, you know what? If you would wear that outfit, you know, out and about, it's good enough for camera too. Yeah. And you can be old. You can be young. You can be middle-aged. You can, it, anything goes these days. Um, what is so attractive is people with courage, people who are willing to be vulnerable, people who are willing to face fears on camera and and really want in their heart to connect. And I think that's the beauty that that is social media today yeah. is our ability to connect with so many people around the world like never before. There's a lot of great things about it and it's such a fantastic tool for artists. I highly recommend that you invest some time and energy towards it. And if you're not good at it, you can get good you know, just by practicing. Your first post will not be as good as your last post. (laughs) (laughs) So thanks, Tanner, for being a part of this. It's been a lot of fun. And if you guys like this video, we have a lot of uh, light movement shows here on this channel. Don't miss Outstanding Artists. It's really cool to watch. Yeah, check out our content and uh, see all the things that we have to offer on Art Social. (laughs) 